Previously on Retail Factor. Resident Evil Month. Resident Evil 3. I feel like we just did this. I feel like, you know, we just did Resident Evil Month, you know, back in January, which was like one of the <laughs> one of the most fun months for YouTube for me, like ever. We had to talk and play Resident Evil all month long because of course Resident Evil is like one of my favorite series of all time. So when Resident Evil 2 Remake came out, it was a big deal. And here we are! Resident Evil 3. I can't believe it. And of course, everybody saw this announcement coming. And I kind of I kind of feel bad. Like I wish that leak didn't happen last week. But I mean, it's the age of the internet. Shit happens. But I mean, the game is still coming and it looks amazing. Let's talk about it real quick. The way they announced it was kind of weird, right? They announced technically the multiplayer mode first with Project Resistance. Nobody had any idea it had anything to do with Resident Evil 3, and now it's like the multiplayer mode. That's so strange. And they gave you the old, the old bait and switch. Let's take a look at the Project Resistance campaign mode. And then it starts and you're just like, hey, wait a second. I got suspicious as soon as they had the clock, you know, showing the, showing the events of Resident Evil 2, and then they rewind like a day to Resident Evil 3, what we find out is Resident Evil 3. But of course, the timeline, that's the way it is, right? Resident Evil 3 takes place before and technically after Resident Evil 2. And I was like a little worried at first. I'm just like, oh no, is this like, is Resident Evil 3 just like a tiny little add-on to Project Resistance? But no, it's like legit the other way around. It's kind of, it's very strange messaging. I think a lot of people were a little, a little worried at first, like, oh no. Oh no, are they doing Resident Evil 3 dirty? But no, Resident Evil 3, from everything I've seen so far, the trailer, all of the art, the redesigned characters, this looks incredible. Jill, over here! <laughs> With the quick turnaround time from Resident Evil 2 to Resident Evil 3, obviously there's, there's, there's a lot of things that are kind of recycled, reused, a lot of animations I would imagine are gonna be very, very much the same. Obviously it's the same engine. I'm sure we're gonna go back to the Raccoon City Police Department, but I guess, I guess if there's any scenario where that is okay, it's this one, because Resident Evil 3, back 20 years ago, did the exact same thing. And in a way, it kind of makes sense that Project Resistance, this multiplayer mode that they're adding, is part of Resident Evil 3, and they're kind of bundling it all together. Because when you think about it, Resident Evil 3, it is, I guess, a smaller game. It doesn't have, it doesn't have the Claire scenario, the Leon scenario, A and B scenarios, it doesn't have any of that. It is just one, one straight shot. There is, there is one cannon. I love Jill and Carlos's new look. Carlos especially, he looks way different. He looks like freaking Miguel from Tekken 7. But I think it was a much needed redesign. Old, old Carlos, he's a little bit generic. But if you wanna, if you're, if you're a purist and you wanna rock the old school stuff, they have the classic costumes as well. You know, I love Jill's old tube top look. It's classic, classic character design. I love it. But of course, it was never the most practical, so this redesign, this reimagining, it makes a lot of sense. I like it a lot. You know, one thing I was really surprised that we didn't really see in the trailer, in the initial reveal, is your boy, Nemesis! Where is Nemesis? Especially considering that he's like, front and center on the box art on the original game, you know? They even dropped Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. They dropped the Nemesis from the title of the game. Very strange. How bizarre. You know, Resident Evil 3 has always lived kind of in Resident Evil 2's shadow, being released so quickly afterwards, and you know, it wasn't as popular, wasn't as well received, but one thing Resident Evil 3 always had going for it was of course Nemesis. I didn't even think he was that scary, he's just, he's just, he's just fucking cool man, he's just a badass. So I do find it strange that they dropped Nemesis from the title, and you didn't really see him that much in the reveal, just like at the very end there. Later on, Capcom did put out some like high-res screenshots, and there's like one, there's one of Nemesis, and he looks badass, he's screaming, I like it. In those screenshots that they put out as well, they, they show a lot of images of like Jill being surrounded by zombies, just like so many zombies. And you know, back again 20 years ago in the original Resident Evil 3, there was a game that I think was the first one to have a much higher emphasis on combat. There was a lot of zombies, there's a lot of ammo, there's a lot of shooting and killing and mowing down zombies, and I think, I don't know, is that is that the approach they're gonna take with this game as well? Because you also gotta think, just like, in terms of Resident Evil lore, at this point, Jill is way more capable, way more seasoned than, you know, Leon and Claire. 
She's she's a member of stars. I'm a member of stars. She's a badass. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they adjust the gameplay. And then of course at the very end you see Jill, she's looking in the mirror, she's in the bathroom, she ain't feeling so hot, and they kind of tease that she might be infected and she's turning. And you know, I've seen some people online kind of predict that maybe there's like an infection mechanic. I don't think so. You know, in the original game, Jill does get infected. <laughs> And you take over as Carlos while he goes and gets a gets a vaccine. So I think it's just one of the story beats, and they're probably sticking to it. And then, of course, they dropped the release date, April 3rd, 2020. That is like four months away. That is nuts. That is insane. And it's such a stacked, like, spring already. It is coming out at such a competitive time. Like, rest in peace, everybody's wallets between like February to April, even May, May is the Avengers game. There's just, there's too much. 2020 is going to be one of the craziest years in video game history. You have one of the most stacked first halves I've ever seen. And then you have brand new consoles, new hardware dropping in the back half of the year. It's going to be crazy. And all I'm hoping for, all I want is for Resident Evil 3 to be even as good as Resident Evil 2. If it's, if it's just as good as that game, then I will be I'll be very happy because Resident Evil 2 was my game of the year for 2019. And maybe I'm a little bit biased because I'm such a big Resident Evil fan, so take it all with a grain of salt. And uh, speaking of game of the year, uh, this is a crazy week for video games. We have a state of play, right, that just happened. We got the Game Awards coming up, and Resident Evil 2 is nominated. What are the other games nominated for game of the year? Control, Resident Evil 2, Smash Ultimate, Sekiro, Death Stranding, and The Outer Worlds. I find it really strange that they're only doing six games for Game of the Year. I think, I think they could swing ten, right? The Oscars does ten. I know. Fuck the Oscars, but still. I think, I think they should add four more games, because my, my runner-up, my second choice for Game of the Year would be Fire Emblem Three Houses. And it's not even on here, it's not even nominated. I know it's a, it's a bit more of a niche title, but that game was fantastic. And then there's like Capcom Cup happening this weekend. If you guys are into fighting games like I am, it's going to be a big deal. There might be some cool, some, some cool stuff shown there, maybe. Or just another season of Street Fighter V. We will see. But as far as predictions go, even though I want Resident Evil 2 to win Game of the Year at the Game Awards, I don't think it's going to win. Looking at this list, I think it's... I mean, as Jeff Keighley, it just might be Death Stranding. If Death Stranding wins, that's going to be very interesting. But I think Death Stranding was a little bit divisive. And I think the safer bet might just be Smash Bros. Ultimate. I have a feeling. I can feel it. I can feel it in my jellies. But let me know what you guys think. What did you think about Resident Evil 3? What do you think is going to win Game of the Year at the Game Awards? And if there's any crazy announcements, Jeff Keighley has been really hyping it up. I guess he hypes it up every every year, right? It's his show. It'd be kind of weird if he didn't. But if there's any crazy announcements, we'll do a follow-up video. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. Peace!